Hey everyone, today I'm super excited to talk about clutchless shifting, power shifting, and motorcycle quick shifters. Why? Well, because they all revolve around one cool thing, shifting gears to go faster. Clutchless shifting means changing gears without using the clutch. Power shifting is all about shifting gears quickly for faster acceleration. And motorcycle quick shifters, they're like magic buttons that help you shift gears smoothly and swiftly. But let me tell you, making this video was quite a challenge. It got pretty long, so I've split it into three chapters. You can jump straight to the part you're interested in or stick around till the end to become a gear shifting expert. Make sure to subscribe to this channel now for more amazing videos like this one. Clutchless shifting motorcycles. There is a big argument going on about clutchless shifting. Is it safe or is it a risky move? If you haven't heard of it, you might have been living under a rock. Clutchless shifting is when you change gears on a bike without using the clutch. It's my favorite trick for bikes without quick shifters. And honestly, I think every rider should know how to do it. It's not new. Racers have been doing it for years. It can be a lifesaver if your clutch cable breaks and can even help you go faster on the track with quicker gear changes. Let's talk about clutchless shifting on a motorcycle, but what does that even mean? A clutchless shift is pretty much what it sounds like. It's when you change gears on a motorcycle without touching the clutch level. You can do it when you're going up or down gears. If you do it right, it feels smooth like butter and can help you speed up faster. But is it safe to do this on regular streets? And does it affect how long your transmission lasts? Let's find out. Is shifting without using the clutch bad for a motorcycle's transmission? Using the wrong way to shift gears without the clutch can damage your motorcycle's transmission. But if you do it right, it's totally safe and won't cause any extra wear on your bike's transmission or related parts. Whether you're using the clutch or just easing off the throttle, reduce the torque to remove the load. Then, shift to the next gear once the load is off. Sounds simple, but it can be tricky. Now, torque is like the twisting force, and load is the weight of the force when it meets resistance. It's a bit like pressure, but not exactly the same. And if you're still feeling confused, don't stress. I'll explain everything step by step with pictures in the next sections. What parts of the engine can be harmed by shifting without using the clutch? Let's focus on what's called sequential gearboxes since most modern motorcycles use them. Here are the four main parts involved in a clutchless shift. 1. Dog gears. These are gears with little bumps on them. The sizes of these gears can differ. 2. Input shaft. This turns at the same speed as the engine and helps drive the output shaft when the clutch is engaged. 3. Output shaft. This turns at the speed of the rear wheel during acceleration or when you're slowing down. 4. Clutch. This part transfers power from the engine to the transmission system. Let me give you a quick rundown of how a motorcycle's transmission works. Here's how it works. The output shaft, which looks like a long metal bar, connects to the rear wheel and all the parts in between. So if the rear wheel spins, the output shaft spins and the other way around. Then there's the input shaft, another long bar-like thing, which is connected to the engine. So when the engine runs, the input shaft spins and vice versa. Now, the clutch is like a connector between these two shafts. It links them together mechanically. So when the engine turns, the clutch and the rear wheel also turn and vice versa. But this only happens when the clutch is engaged, meaning it's connecting the two shafts. Gears and dogs. Each shaft, whether it's the input or output shaft, has gears on it. 
These gears look like little cogs and they connect with neighboring gears using small metal blocks called dogs and slots. 1. Fixed gears. These gears are attached to the shaft itself so they spin when the shaft spins. 2. Free spinning gears. These gears aren't attached to the shaft directly. Instead, they sit on a bearing so they can spin independently of the shaft. This setup lets gears that aren't being used to spin freely while the ones that are engaged stay fixed to transmit power. Now, here's the cool part. Gears work together in pairs. When you choose a gear, it has to fit together with another gear to send power from the engine to the rear wheel. These gears come in different sizes to control how much power is sent, which we call gear ratios. Here are some examples to show you what they look like. Fun fact. Transmission gear ratios. Gear ratios might sound complicated, but they're actually pretty straightforward. Each gear is designed for a specific purpose. First gear gives you the most power for starting from a stop, but it doesn't let you go very fast. On the other hand, sixth gear lets you go super fast, but doesn't give you as much power. All the gears in between are just steps in between these extremes, gradually changing from the highest power to the highest speed as you shift up through the gears. Some gears are fixed to the shafts, meaning they always turn with them. Others are free spinning, so they only transmit power when they're connected to a fixed gear on another shaft. A visual example of the gearbox in neutral. Power comes in through the input shaft, but doesn't go out through the output shaft, the one that moves the rear wheel, when the free spinning gear isn't connected to the other gears on the output shaft. But when you choose a gear, which means it's engaged, the free spinning gears and the ones mounted on the shaft lock together, sending power to the output shaft and making the rear wheel move. How does a bad gear shift cause damage? A bad gear shift can potentially cause a lot of damage. You could end up bending shift forks, messing up shift levers, wearing out the clutch, breaking gears in the gearbox, or even bending shafts, just to name a few. How bad things get depends on a bunch of stuff like how fast you're going, how hard you're shifting, the condition of the road or track, how much you're revving the engine, and more. What exactly causes damage when you make a bad gear shift? The reason why a bad gear shift can damage things comes down to one key thing, forces. But let's break it down into two words, torque and load. When you give the throttle input, power travels through the transmission system. This power turns into torque, and when it meets resistance, that torque changes into load. During this phase, the gears get stuck in place because of the force. So, even if you try to change gears, nothing much happens. The gearbox only unlocks when the torque goes down and the load is removed. Mechanical load. Let's simplify mechanical load. Imagine you're standing with both arms straight, hands against a wall at head height. The load is like the amount of force pressing on the wall where your hands touch. It's a measure of the weight, strength, and gravity affecting that spot. Think of force as pushing and pulling, while load is about how much weight a certain area carries. If you put your hands lower on the wall, the load would probably increase. That's because gravity and your weight would add more pressure to that spot, even if you're pushing with the same force. A quick test. Look at the three pictures. Guess which position would make it hardest for you to rub your hands together. Load is shown in green. Force is represented by the red arrows. One, minimal load and light pressure when hands are pressed together. Two, medium load with hands pressed together with moderate pressure. Three, maximum load shown when a person forcefully presses their hands together. If you picked number three, you got it. Maximum load means maximum friction. In picture three, the force of the person's arms is much stronger than in the other two pictures, making it the toughest to rub your hands together. How can you get the timing right for shifting gears without using the clutch? 
Timing a clutchless gear shift right means taking off the pressure and changing gears at the perfect moment. When you're speeding up, the best time to shift is when you ease off the throttle and the engine slows down a bit. And when you're slowing down, you should shift when you give the throttle a quick blip and the engine revs up. During acceleration, the pressure is on the gearbox. But when you're slowing down, the pressure shifts to the engine, making them spin at different speeds. But with a rev match, you briefly ease off the pressure and keep the engine and transmission spinning at similar speeds. This helps you change gears smoothly. Rev matching. Rev matching means making sure the engine speed, measured in RPMs, matches the transmission speed. If one spins faster than the other, it can mess up control or even damage the engine. To fix this, we adjust the engine speed using the throttle to keep everything in sync. When we give the throttle a quick blip, it makes the engine RPMs go up. And if we ease off the throttle, it makes them go down. Doing this can also help to take off some of the pressure. When you match the speeds of both parts, you briefly lessen the resistance. And remember, load happens when force meets resistance. Imagine you have two gears. One is spinning and the other isn't. What do you think will happen? Now, picture both gears spinning at the same speed. What do you think will happen then? In the first example, when one gear isn't moving, it creates resistance and makes it harder for the gears to turn. But when both gears rotate together, the resistance decreases and the gears can move more freely. When we consider momentum and inertia, things become clearer. For instance, high speeds mean high momentum. The faster you're going, the longer it takes to stop. When you twist the throttle back, boosting RPMs, you speed up. And when you let go of the throttle, you slow down. But at high speeds, when you ease off the throttle, the rear wheel keeps going while the engine RPMs start to drop. So instead of the engine powering the rear wheel, the rear wheel now powers the engine, causing it to slow down, which is called deceleration. This is what we call engine braking or over revving. When you shift to higher gears, up the gearbox, they need less power, so the engine RPMs drop to match speeds. But when you shift to lower gears, down the gearbox, they need more power, so you have to increase the engine RPMs to match. How can you tell when the pressure is off in a clutchless shift? Load is taken off when the engine revs reach high and low points, like when you give the throttle a quick blip and the revs hit a high point, or when you ease off the throttle and the revs drop down. Let's dive into a few examples of how load is applied during throttle input. 1. The engine's RPM is on a crankshaft which moves the clutch. 2. The clutch turns when it's engaged and spins the input shaft. 3. The input shaft, shown at the bottom left, turns clockwise to move the big gear which is free spinning. 4. The slots on the free spinning gear turn counterclockwise, shown with red arrows, and make the dogs highlighted in blue on the gear attached to the output shaft spin. 5. The gear connected to the output shaft rotates the output shaft to move the final drive. A bit long, but I hope it's all clear. How to shift gears on a motorcycle without using the clutch? Let's get into the nitty gritty of clutchless upshifting step by step. It's not too hard to learn and you can get the hang of it in about an hour. Start with the basics and then refine your technique later. 1. Turn on the ignition. 2. Squeeze the clutch lever. 3. Shift into first gear. 4. Start accelerating by twisting the throttle while slowly releasing the clutch. 5. Keep going in first gear until you reach the right RPM to change gears, the right speed for shifting up. 6. Put a little upward pressure on the gear shifter with your foot to preload it. 7. Ease off the throttle a bit and shift into second gear as the revs drop. If you've done it right, it should slide into gear smoothly. 8. Release the pressure on the gear shifter so it can move to the next gear. 9. Twist the throttle again and keep riding in second gear. 10. Repeat these steps until you get the hang of smoothly shifting up without using the clutch. How to downshift with no clutch. 8 steps. 
When you slow down on a motorcycle, the back wheel and gears spin faster than the engine. This can make shifting gears tricky. To match the speeds and shift smoothly, you need to rev the engine a bit while shifting down. Clutchless downshifts are not recommended, but if you choose to do it, then here's how it should be correctly done. 1. Turn on the bike. 2. Squeeze the clutch and shift to first gear. 3. Get to a good speed, like in third gear or higher. 4. Press down slightly on the gear lever with your foot to prepare for the shift. 5. Rev the engine a bit, blip the throttle, and shift gears right when the revs peak. 6. Ease off the gear lever so the next gear can engage smoothly. 7. Roll back on the throttle and keep riding. 8. Keep practicing until you can do it smoothly without thinking too much. But honestly, even though it sounds simple, it's not always easy to do perfectly. That's where quick shifters and auto blippers come in handy. Motorcycle Quick Shifters in recent years, quick shifters have become extremely popular in the motorcycle industry. They have pretty much replaced the need to learn how to shift gears without using the clutch. Nowadays, many motorcycles offer quick shifters as a standard or optional upgrade. And honestly, they're a lot of fun to use when riding. Quick shifters are mainly made for racing, but they work great for regular street riding too. Especially when you're riding aggressively, they make changing gears really easy fast and super smooth. This helps you make better decisions while riding, whether you're going straight or taking corners. What is a motorcycle quick shifter? A quick shifter is a little gadget that you attach to your motorcycle's gear lever. It lets you change to a higher gear without needing to use the clutch. It's not something that comes with every bike when you buy it. Instead, it's an extra thing you can get for most motorcycles. But nowadays, many new bikes come with it already included. The quick shifter only helps with shifting up to higher gears. If you want help shifting down to lower gears too, you can add something called an auto blipper so with a quick shifter you get one quicker gear shifts going up two a smoother and more enjoyable ride both on regular roads and on a racetrack three it makes riding less complicated so you can concentrate on other things while you ride how do quick shifters work Quick shifters are easy to use but quite complicated pieces of equipment. They help you shift gears in a motorcycle without using the clutch. Here's how they work. When you shift up a gear, the quick shifter briefly stops the engine's power. It does this using a special sensor that detects your shift motion and tells the engine control unit ECU to pause the power for a moment. These devices save a tiny bit of time, milliseconds, every time you shift gears. What is a spring-loaded position sensor? Spring-loaded position sensors use a spring and a coil to figure out how much force is being applied. When the force changes, the length of the coil changes too. This change in length is measured to understand what's happening. What is a quick stem sensor? Though not very common, I've come across some aftermarket quick shifters lately that use special sensors called quick stem sensors. These sensors detect how the shift lever moves. Quick stem sensors are made to sense both thrust and torque at the same time. They do this by using a strain gauge connected to something called a Wheatstone Bridge. One of the first companies to use this technology in their quick shifters is Helltech. This makes their products suitable for a wider range of motorcycle models. These quick shifters work like the others mentioned before, but they can gather and control more information. You can easily see this data on the cool mobile app that comes with the product. Here's my opinion on quick shifters. In my honest opinion, adding a quick shifter just for shifting up is perfect for most riders. Having both a quick shifter for up shifts without using the clutch and an auto blipper for down shifts without the clutch might be too much. It can make the motorcycle feel more like it's semi-automatic 
rather than fully manual. But don't worry, in the next part, we'll talk all about bi-directional quick shifting, which includes auto blipping. Let's blip in. How do auto blippers work for clutchless downshifts? Adding an auto blipper to a quick shifter makes things more complicated and puts more pressure on the transmission system. It's important to know that auto blippers only work with bikes that have a ride-by-wire throttle. This is a modern throttle system that uses sensors and actuators to control the engine's power output instead of traditional cables. Auto blippers have to do a more complex job because they need to tell the engine to match the speed of the transmission, which helps to smooth out the gear changes. Auto blippers are really important because they have to control the throttle electronically. This means they have to stop the throttle from working while you're shifting gears. The good thing about having both a quick shifter and an auto blipper on newer bikes is that they can gather a lot of information. They can figure out things like when you need to change gear, where the engine speed is, and even how your bike is leaning or tilting. Pretty smart, right? What should you consider when buying a quick shifter? Before you decide to buy a quick shifter, think about where, when, and how you'll be using it on your bike. Do you really need it? Because not every rider does. Also, think about how much money you're okay with spending. This will help you narrow down your options. Consider if you want to go with the manufacturer's original equipment or aftermarket options. If you want an auto blipper feature, check if it's available. And see if the device can be adjusted to fit your riding style as many aftermarket options options can be fine-tuned. Lastly, think about how long the device pauses the engine when you shift gears. If your bike doesn't switch gears easily, having a longer pause can be helpful. How much do the best aftermarket quick shifters cost? The top choice for quick shifters and auto blippers is usually the one made and sold by your motorcycle's manufacturer. But sometimes your bike model might not have them yet. In that case, you can look at aftermarket options to find what you need. What are the downsides of using a quick shifter? Your riding style is the most important thing to consider when adjusting a quick shifter, but sometimes the settings that come with it might not match how you ride. Quick shifters rely on special technology like sensors and computers. Because of this, they can sometimes have problems. These problems range from not working, sometimes because of software issues, to completely breaking down. Buying an aftermarket quick shifter can be expensive. It might also be hard to fix or adjust if some something goes wrong. And if you ever want to sell your bike, having a custom quick shifter might make it harder to sell. There are even stories of quick shifters failing while riding fast. This can be really dangerous and might even damage your bike's transmission. Quick shifters can change how you ride, especially at high speeds. They can also have problems with wiring or sensors. And if you upgrade other parts of your bike, the quick shifter might not work right anymore. But if you find a good quick shifter, it'll give you super smooth gear shifts. If it doesn't work smoothly, it's not worth buying. How to shift gears with a quick shifter. Using a quick shifter is like riding an old semi-automatic Honda Super Cub. You just put your foot under the shift lever and shift up. But what makes quick shifters cool is that you don't need to ease off the throttle when changing gears. You can keep the throttle pinned, shift gears, and still have a smooth ride. Here's how you use it. 1. Turn on the ignition. 2. Pull in the clutch. 3. Shift down into first gear. 4. Slowly release the clutch while rolling back on the throttle. 5. Put your foot under the gear lever and press down firmly. 6. Accelerate to the desired RPMs and shift up using the gear lever. 7. Repeat the process. If you have an auto blipper or a quick shifter with a downshift feature, you can also use this technique for downshifting. Power shifting motorcycles. I wasn't sure if I should talk about this topic in the video. It's not because it doesn't work, but because it can cause damage if you don't do it right. 
However, this doesn't mean it's a bad way of writing. It's just that from what I've seen, it doesn't suit everyone. I'll explain more about that in a bit. Most writers don't use this technique and there are several reasons why. Power shifting is not something for everyone. I suggest you steer clear of it unless you really need to use it. What is a power shift on a motorcycle? Power shifting is a technique where you lightly press the clutch lever and shift up a gear without completely letting go of the throttle. This helps keep the engine's speed high during the gear change. The aim of power shifting is to keep the engine running at its highest speed and power while shifting gears. This helps you tackle tough parts of a track, jump over obstacles, exit corners quickly, navigate turns, and climb hills without losing much power. When you shift up a gear, each new gear ratio in the gearbox gives you less power but more speed so by keeping the engine speed high which means keeping the torque high you can enter the new gear with enough power to make up for the loss power shifting is mainly used in motocross particularly with off-road bikes like dirt bikes and dual sports i haven't really seen it used in other types of riding is power shifting bad for motorcycles power shifting is a technique that can seriously wear out your clutch and other parts of the transmission system. It's something I'd strongly advise against for beginners, especially if you're riding a sport bike, cruiser, or touring bike. Keeping the engine running at high speeds while shifting gears isn't good for the mechanical parts. It might help a bit in off-road racing, but it comes at a cost. When you release the clutch while the engine is spinning much faster than the transmission, the two parts need to match speeds again. This can cause them to slam together, which isn't good for the bike's parts. Power shifting versus clutchless shifting. Learning to do power shifts is much tougher and riskier than learning clutchless shifts. It's better to start with clutchless shifting and then progress from there. The only somewhat safe thing about a power shift is that you only need to pull in the clutch a little bit to change gears, but when you let go of it, there's a lot of power that kicks in. If you're not experienced, this sudden burst of power could cause you to lose control and maybe even crash. Quick shifters, on the other hand, let you change gears up and down the gearbox in a safer way. But of course, you shouldn't try it when you're going around bends or curves. How to power shift on a motorcycle 1. Turn on the ignition 2. Pull in the clutch lever 3. Shift into first gear 4. Slowly let go of the clutch while gently rolling back on the throttle 5. Reach a safe maximum engine speed RPM for the next gear 6. Keep the throttle open or ease off just a little 7. Put your foot under the shift lever and apply slight pressure to prepare for the next gear 8. Lightly pull in the clutch lever just a tiny bit to smoothly shift into the next gear. 9. Use the shift lever to change to the next gear. 10. Release the clutch lever. 11. Roll back on the throttle and hold on tight. 12. Repeat these steps for each gear change as needed. I completely forgot about how much science goes into engineering, but that's what makes it so fascinating. Creating this video has not only helped me understand gear shifting better, but it's also settled the debate on how different riding styles affect an engine's health. Sure, there will still be some people who disagree, but for the most part, the answers are pretty clear. Power shifting isn't a great idea for most riders, except maybe for off-road enthusiasts. Clutchless shifts can be awesome if done right. And quick shifters? They're fantastic and something every rider should experience at least once. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for being a part of our community. Please share this video as I've put a lot of effort into it. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button to support the channel, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of our new content.